Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fresh Bake. This is the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. I am your host, David. My wife is here somewhere. Hi. So you she said is. good morning? No, I said good evening. Oh, okay. Wow, we're off to a great start. Fresh Bake, we're here on a Friday night. It's a Halloween party. Well, it's not a party night. It's a Halloween night. Gotcha. Halloween festivities are happening. We're at Disneyland. Uh, getting in some extra show tonight because we got a few more Halloween things that we wanted to cover for you guys this week uh, before the lady takes a few weeks off at least maybe months uh, this may be the last one well, no I, I think we're gonna see you um, next week a little bit one more Saturday yes not this coming time but the following Saturday like the 12th I think and then the couple whatever you do night runs like I can do it all right well we might be doing some night runs again this week later because Next week, we're taking the weekend off because that's our baby moon. We're taking the weekend off. So we got some, yes. A oh, yeah, it's what? It's, it's no, it's, is that for my birthday? Yeah, well, you're going to go golfing while I'm going to get Italian food. For Happy food. birthday to me. <laughs> so, Fresh Bake, we're on Main Street Disneyland on a Friday night. It's late. We're, I, I guess, our first uh, stop. We're going to, okay, we're going to do some Halloween stuff. Uh, the plan is to look at the Halloween tree, uh, maybe see that uh, dance party they do in Tomorrowland. Uh, maybe, uh, what was the other thing we're trying to do? Oh, maybe meet some characters. Oh yeah, the uh, if, we're, uh, if, it, if we're lucky. And we're, but, man, we're also gonna get some food, which is what we're doing right now because it's a Friday night and that means we eat. And possibly fireworks. And possibly fireworks. Uh, and that's the first thing we do usually on a Friday night is eat. Plus, maybe you're hungry, right? I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Go leave some food over it's here. It's been a rough day. Uh, are we looking at Rancho del Zocalo? I think so, because that's like the one thing we haven't tried that's Halloween. Well, we haven't been there in a long yeah. time anyway. And that too. Yeah. So, so yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's go to Rancho del Zocalo. Okay, I'm still trying to get... Wow. It is crowded. Doesn't this feel... It feels pretty crowded, right? It's pretty... Yeah, it's pretty bad. Ba -da 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 -da. You know, I, I feel I, I'm walking through Main Street or Main Street right now, heading towards the castle, and I keep thinking I'm expecting Christmas for some reason. Oh, Let's go this here. way. We're not there just yet. I know, right? Like, because this happens to me every single year. Once we do the Halloween party, I feel like Halloween is over, and already now I'm ready for the next up. thing. Yes, I'm already. I'm gonna start talking about Christmas on Twitter uh, real soon. <laughs> Melody's like that. Real Melody, soon. Yeah. When, like Melody says, like right when it hits like fall time, it's Christmas. Yep. I got a jacket on today. That means it's Christmas. You know, as we were walking in, I realized that uh, sometimes we take these things for granted. Just how wonderful Rancho is themed. We've got this really authentic looking mural here. It's very like Zorro-esque, right? The landscaping, the beautiful uh, assigned entranceway here. Matter of fact, let's take a little walk. Let's take a look through Rancho and see all the beautiful things that we can find that, that you may or may not even notice while you're having your tacos. Maybe, you know what, 
sometimes I wonder if it's some people don't know that you can switch over. Like they think that that's one line for everything. Uh, right? I don't know, but can you get the tacos over there though? I don't think so. All right. Well, those I guess are the dueling tacos. Right here. Yeah. I suppose. Now, yes. good good fortune for us, they were actually in the enchilada line, so we got to get out of that yeah. line, which is great. We got busy too, so we. we I know, just right? It. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't look like the picture that they have that I've seen. Some, the, the, the the plating was quite a bit different, but it looks interesting. I can't wait to try it. There's a lot of veggies going on. It said pickled veggies, so we yeah, got the pickled, pickled. The pickled veggies are back, but what is this going on right? Okay, the shadows here. That's a cauliflower. That's pickled. Underneath the pickled onions, I guess is what. I don't what is know. That? I don't know. Like maybe a slaw, oh a cabbage. God, okay, what's that? That looks like peppers, red onion. This one looks better than that one. Wait, are these two different kind of tacos? Yes. Is that what's happening? Yes. There's two different. There's kinds beef, of and I think beef and. And there's dueling. Right. Magic. Bubble magic. Uh, Liz went with a standard enchilada plate, which is great. I'm gonna mix all of that and then dip it with my cheese. I'm so excited. You got some cheese? cheese. We also got this guy. We did get the pan dulce. What's it called again? Ice cream sandwich. Yeah, pan dulce I, ice cream yeah, sandwich. Yeah, yeah, I think so, pretty much. Uh, it looks beautiful. I don't want to eat it as usual. I it's too love pretty. these type of Me uh, Mexican uh, cookies. Like oh, bread. it's like or sweet bread. Mexican yeah, it's sweet like bread. bread. Oh, but it makes so a nice good. hat for our dessert. So what we're doing, we're going to we're gonna smush it down, and then we're going to take a bite. Thank you. I have literally no idea what I'm eating. I mean, I'm guessing there's. I can't identify any of this. It's too dark, and I don't have the I don't have the description in front of me. So I'm just gonna. That is very interesting. When he, I don't know. When he says that, I just don't know what that means. It's like, it's fajita meat, basically. It's, it's ground beef. So it's not like uh, asada. No, 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 no. But I still can't identify most of the other flavors that are happening there. So is it, is it good? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Try the chicken one. If I can find it. There's so much pickleness happening, like, I don't even know. There's a lot of food here. Yeah. Uh, I'll never be able to finish all this. this is, I think they call it butter chicken. Butter chicken. Okay. They don't. They don't say. They don't describe any of that other stuff on there other than it's pickled, pickled vegetables. Mm. Yo, you like that one more? Well, it's the. Uh, it's not necessarily the chicken. The chicken is. It is what it is. It's chicken. But it's all the other stuff that goes with the chicken that I'm enjoying on this more so than that. Okay. But again, I'm, I'm looking at the thing. It just says. Raised butter chicken. It doesn't describe any of the other elements that are in there. And I'm not, I don't have a refined palate for that kind of thing. <laughs> and there's also, I could, there's, there's refried brains in there. Kind of like, it's more like a tostada. Right, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Well, it's time for this thing. How, how, how are you supposed to put that in your stomach? That looks impossible to eat. You no, are gonna, oh, oh my god, she murdered it. It's so soft. Yeah. It's like all bread. Okay. Holy crap, that's so good. <laughs> Everybody at Rancho heard you. <gasps> that is so good. Was that the best ice cream sandwich I've ever had in my life? It's brains. Do you believe it's brains? No. It would be better if it was brains. It tastes like, like a birthday party. I want to have a birthday party. <laughs> Try it. I just got, did you get any of that in there? Uh, is this Cool Whip? Yeah, I know. I got some of that on mine. I'm going to have some of that. All right. <laughs> cinnamon. That's cinnamon. On top. It's on, it's, it's like a sweet sugar, per se. It's not cinnamon, per se. It tastes like cinnamon. <clears throat> this is really delicious, you're right. It's probably one of my favorite things here so far. For the Halloween season. Holy heck. That, I can just eat the bread, honestly, because it's yeah. so good. I told you, Mexican sweet bread man, they to tell a secret. One of the complaints that I have about a lot of Disney desserts is that 
it's just the ice cream that you're right. eating. Like right. so many like the shakes and the right. and the loop de loop and the other things that we tried were like, well this is good. It's because you're eating delicious ice cream. But this That's not what's happening here. No. The actual dessert is the sweet is the actual it, Yeah, is the actual bread. yeah, the, the sweet bread. There is that's, a name for them that's and I always really forget. Cool. I'm digging that. It's really good. It's too much. But the ice cream is good. How much is it? It's too much for one oh. person. You know, it's it's a big dessert. It's really delicious, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad we got that. And you know, the by the way, the Dooley tacos were really good. It was a lot of food for it. You can share that for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I just uh, one taco per person, perhaps. This was a good dinner. I enjoyed this dinner quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking to do the Halloween stuff, this is a good place to go. Get the Dooley Tacos, bring a friend, share it with them. Share this thing, which I keep putting in shadow because I'm standing right behind in front of the light. Oh, she just, she just eviscerated that brain sandwich. She's going for the ice cream now. What happened to the sweet bread? What a great idea dinner at Rancho wind up being. That was fun. I love cheese enchiladas. You want, oh, cheese enchiladas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thumbs up, like I said, on on oh. the uh, Duelist tacos and the Pandulce ice cream sandwich was, was a revelation. So I am wow. really digging like Latino desserts lately because I'm digging okay. the uh, what what is that I've been liking lately? Tajin on everything. For me, I know for a lot of, there's a lot of chocolate lovers, and I love chocolate. But if I can choose between a chocolate cake versus that, yeah. I want that. Yeah, all day. All day. I, and like my sister and dad are like, no, it's chocolate all the way. And I'm just like, I'm like more like my mom, I guess. I like the vanilla ice cream and like the caramel. Yeah, what's the, wrong with vanilla? I don't know. I love vanilla. Like <laughs> hey, listen, right over your shoulder, baby. I want to grow my own. That's a Halloween tree. Like, I want to grow a Halloween tree. Now, we talked about that a long time ago on Fresh Bake, back in the day. I remember the cartoon movie. The cartoon movie? It was a cartoon movie called Oh, did they do Halloween one? Tree. Yeah? Uh, about, based on the book right, right. and so forth. Well, let's get a good look at this guy. Okay. And I'm going to give them a little bit of history, a little bit of backstory about the Halloween tree. You bet. Look at that beauty. It's kind of breathtaking, isn't it? I, like, I like to be under it and just pretend like I'm like out in the woods. Like you're in the tree and the real tree. Yeah, and like I'm just like in a different atmosphere. Right. Like, I love Disneyland, but I want to like take it and like go to yeah. like the East Coast really quick. And I mean, it's uh, we'll get a good look at there in a minute. But I love to see this from a. I, I don't know what it is. Why am I such a sucker for lighting effects? So this really works for me. Just this one sort of lone thing out here in Frontierland. It, it really stands out. It's beautifully presented. Uh, now, a lot of people know a little bit of the history, at least, about, you know, because I should say some might think it's just a random tree that they decorate for Halloween every year. But it has, you know, there's, there's history. Uh, the tree is inspired by, I guess, Ray Bradbury, uh, who was a science fiction writer. He was writing science fiction really before that it was even a thing uh, in the 70s. Yeah, it was kind of a new thing. People weren't really writing that kind of stuff. Uh, and he wrote a story called The Halloween Tree, which is basically, it's a history of Halloween. I have not seen the movie. Halloween as it's, as, it's, as it's told in different cultures, different time frames. So, uh, uh, so it meant a lot to him, obviously. He's science fiction horror kind of thing. Fahrenheit 451 is a book that he wrote. That's true. Right, she's looking at me like, see, the young folk today, I know of it, I knew of it, because he wrote that in 19, no, he wrote The Halloween Tree in 1971. Did uh, really? Yeah, I know, wow. right? But Fahrenheit 451 is probably his most famous book. They just recently tried to make a movie out of it with uh, the guy from uh, Michael B. Jordan. What's the Rocky? He's in Apollo. He's Cree. Uh, was uh, he also in uh, Black Panther? He, Killmonger. That's yeah. right. Fans of our show probably know him as Killmonger. Yeah. Uh, he was he was in that movie. Yes. Didn't do very well. Yeah. Uh, but that's basically you know that's it's inspired by a Radbury Ray Bradbury novel. So they hang little pumpkins throughout the tree. You can see a couple of them there hanging on the branches. There's one right on top of my head. It's pretty fantastic. You can tell my list this year. Of watch the Halloween tree. The 
Oh, the well, I don't even know where to find that, the short or whatever uh, you're talking about. You can find it on Amazon. Maybe yeah. we have to rent it, kind of like yeah. how we do. But um, I don't remember it that well. Well, hardly anybody does. Now, here's the cool part. Again, Ray Bradbury is before most everybody's time. You've got to be an old, old fogey like me, really, to even, and even he was kind of before my time too, because I was just, you know, a couple you're, years you're, old. You're a kid. I was yeah, just a little, yeah. yeah. I, so I didn't read him. I didn't learn about Fahrenheit 451 until I was much older. Uh, but he was a huge Disneyland fan. He was, he was friends with Walt. He really loved Disneyland, which I find kind of humorous. Well. I don't know if humorous is the right word. Uh, I think it's neat that somebody who's makes you know, whose whose bread and butter is science fiction, uh, right. horror, you know, right. could have that sort of. Also, he has that whimsical side. Well, that that's like us. I yeah, mean, sure. We, I love to live. I love me some horror. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, he uh, he would consult with Walt sometimes on uh -huh. attractions here at the park. He even helped. If I, if I remember correctly, he might have even helped uh, with the, the design of Spaceship Earth. Okay. At, uh, say, like at Epcot. Or something. Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna like. He's not gonna do anything. Yeah, he's not gonna design a ride for you. But he's. I mean, his his is more about aesthetic, perhaps, uh, in terms of that design. But I thought that was pretty interesting that the, he has a very close. Really, a lot of artists, you know, like Salvador Dali was another one who had a very close relationship. I, okay, she's looking at me. Uh, he's the, the melting clock guy. Got it. Do you see that? Yeah, I learned that to my, one of my theater classes. Yeah, so like, you, didn't, uh, you, you, know, him by, you know him by his art, but not necessarily by his name. Right, correct. But anyway, so different thing. But he helped actually, I think he tried to do something with Disney also. Oh, okay. Sidetrack. What year was he though? Was he like... Dolly? Yeah. Well, he was he was around in Walt's time. I mean, they, they he consulted the on. Clock guy. Yeah. Huh. I thought he was like more like. 60s. It seems like he would be. Yeah, it seems like he like would his, be. His, his stuff was like before his time. I feel like. It well, was he was already an established artist by the time, you know, he started collaborating with Disney. Oh, so, but yeah, so he would have been in the forties and the fifties probably. Yeah. Oh, my brain. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's look at this tree some more. Okay. Eagle. Here, which I kind of don't remember seeing this plaque last year because we came by here last year on the way out of uh, Haunted Mansion that one time on our way out of the park we stopped by here that was our only visit to the Halloween tree last year we kind of rushed it but I don't remember seeing this plaque here I do I mean it was it's been here in years past but for some reason I thought they didn't have it out here just last year but this is sort of a dedication uh, on the night of Halloween 2007 I wonder if they had just installed the tree that year. Probably, that's probably why it's plaqued. Yeah. This is 2007. Is that, well, I mean, they've been doing Halloween forever, but maybe this hey. is like when, hey, hi. How's it going? <laughs> um, this is when they probably had the Halloween tree for the first time. Yeah. This is 2007. Just I 2007. Mean, but oh. obviously they always, I mean, do they always do like Halloween, like a pumpkin? Like, like what well, year did that start? The Halloween about? thing is is a fairly new tradition at Disneyland. So maybe that's when like yeah, Halloween, you know, and yeah. Mickey's Halloween party. And I'm fast. new as in maybe maybe not even 2007. Yeah, it, it, it might even be after that. Because I, I know for a fact, like since the no, I take that back. They were doing it. Rick Dees did a thing, and that would have, yeah, he did a thing for Halloween at Disneyland, and that kind of started it, if I remember correctly. And what year was that? Early? Well, Rick Dees is, well, he's been around for years. He's been in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, he's so, yeah. Um, they got some art on here, that's kind of neat. I think this is from his book, Yeah, right? the illustrator who did the book did these pieces. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it is on my list. I, now they have a, a version, like a kid version of the Halloween tree. I'll read, we'll read it to Sophie too, very long time. There is, really? Why do I feel like you're crazy? But I mean, I watched the cartoon movie and it was like, I think it came out in the maybe 80s and it was a kid's movie. Really? I well, I mean, it was kids. Kids were the subject of the story and it wasn't necessarily a super like spooky. No, it was like saving a Halloween tree. Well, right. It, well, the tree, I think the tree was some sort of conduit for them to learn about the history of Halloween. Oh, okay. Uh, 
And it, I, for, you know, it's funny, as we talk about it, it's, I keep in my mind, I just keep imagining something like Charlie Brown, like a Charlie Brown style cartoon. No, it's not. It's, it's weird animation. Yeah. It's, it's very... It's, you know, like Pippi Longstock in the cartoon? Sure. It's, oh, no. Okay. I only know... Um, trying to think of another cartoon. The real Pippi. Um, I mean, it's definitely old school animation, though. Well, we'll look into it. Maybe I have already found it, and I got clips in this video. Wouldn't that be neat? Following tree is pretty neat. It's an unexpected thing, an unexpectedly fun Halloween thing thing that you can find in Frontierland. It's, it's neat. It's, it's what makes Disneyland Halloween. Well, and that's an interesting thing because uh, this is one of those things where we feel like, oh, Disneyland, you know, they've been rocking that tree for decades. I wonder, you know, what, you know, what Walt was thinking when he decided to make a Halloween tree. And it's 2007. 2007. 10 plus huh? years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, we gotta go over to New Orleans Square. That's our fake. Look at this scene in New Orleans Square of folks getting ready for Fantasmic. It's about to start. It's almost 9 o'clock. The, oh, the music went down. We're getting ready, but we're not. Look at this, they got a queue right here. We're not. We're in this queue, actually, because we're going to meet, I think, word on the street is that it's not Jack and Sally, but Constance Hatchaway. But I mean, if it is Jack and Sally, that'll be okay, too. But I heard Constance Hatchaway, which is pretty cool, right in there. That's kind of a rare thing. They haven't been, they've only done those for special events like the 50th uh, or things like that, or the, uh, the Halloween party. Last year, you could meet Constance at the Halloween party last year. But normally, in New Orleans Square, you normally could only ever meet Jack and Sally. Yeah, I would love to meet them. I've only met Jack, like, that one time. He's a great meet, Jack. He's Jack is, yeah, Jack is great. It's better would, with Sal. I, exactly. I would love to say that they're like one of my favorite couples in the world. Do you hear that music happening right now? That very high pitch yeah. sounds like you're doing to the like wine glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic, getting ready to blow our minds right now. And then beautiful people at Club 33 are going to watch on the balcony. I thought you were going to get into a Marilyn Manson concert. the Haunted Mansion pillars right there. Yes. They're cool. Amazing. We're like, we're being those guests right now that won't leave. So everything is just like, that down the hatch, everything up. Uh, Constance bounced out of the meeting. That, that go off if like someone like, like 
loss prevention or anything like that? No, no, that's a, that's a fire alarm. That's fire. Yeah, it's a completely different alarm. They don't have those loss prevention alarms here inside the park. about trying to talk about what was happening in New Orleans Square and they closed not just like pieces all, of eight they the, the guy all, the yeah. guy said we have to evacuate New Orleans no they, they seem pretty concerned so, like yeah they, this isn't a drill well, I mean they're gonna take everything seriously yeah, that's true. they're not gonna take anything lightly uh, it, it's pretty urgent whenever anything happens I didn't see any smoke anywhere and obviously it's not so bad that they they just wanted to get rid of the immediate area it's probably local, whatever it had. It's probably yeah. nothing. Um, when we left, there were still people just kind of lingering. Anyway. On our way in to the parks today, we stopped in downtown Disney to catch the Scarolers. Now, you probably recognize the Scarolers from, or have heard that name. They performed right here, actually, in front of the Golden Horseshoe yeah, they were up there. for they the up there? 50th anniversary. Uh, no, they were right in the front. Oh, they were up there. They were up there for Adam, but oh, not for us. darn it. I like it when they were up there. Yeah. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're carolers, but doing Halloween themed stuff. They were here for the 50th anniversary. We caught them on the Mark Twain also. Well, they were performing out in downtown Disney, and we caught their, uh, there's one of their sets out there. Here are some highlights of that show. <laughs> All dressed up with nowhere to go Walking with the dead man over my shoulder All dressed up with nowhere to go Walking with the dead man over my shoulder. <laughs> Walking down the street I was hit by something last night in my sleep It's a dead man's party Who could ask for more? Everybody's coming Leave your body at the door Leave your body and soul at the door We are the Scarolers! We are six of the 999 happy arms who reside in the Old Mansion, singing some of our favorite seasonal songs for you. And it's not quite Halloween until we get to the scary movies. Oh. Maybe a couple of scary TV shows. I have a couple favorite themes. Uh, same as well, but I want to play a little game with our audience today. Oh. Try to guess as many scary movies as you can, and at the end, you'll win a prize. So when you hear it, just shout it out.
unexpectedly great, I feel like. Unexpectedly great. And I love that it's just a free little pop-up show that they do in downtown Disney. Uh, you can catch the whole show on our uh, Disneyland uh, acoustic channel, Disneyland Sights and Sounds. There's a link. Click the eye in the sky for that. Uh, we'll see you next time, Fresh Baker. I hear it. I hear it. I hear a dance party happening. I love to dance. Is it, what, what's the theme? Is it Pixar? No, it's Halloween. -y. It's Halloween. So it's just a DJ right now. It's a villain's dance party. Will there be villains? because we have two of the loveliest ladies coming from the Royal Ball. Everybody give it up for Anastasia and Brazil! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies, please behave. We have guests, ladies. Yes, yeah, give it up! Can I see scary faces out there? Oh, yes! Very scary! Everybody, put your arms straight out in front of you like this, and we're gonna shake back and forth. Like we're a mummy. Ooh. And then monster arms over to the left, monster arms over to the right. So mummy, mummy, monster, monster, mummy, mummy, monster, monster. You got go, Let's see those scary faces, everybody. Scary faces.
Baker's Bake, every, the villains are such good fun. They really are. I like the heroes and princesses. Yeah, they're cool, but let's be real. The villains are very good. Dude, they've, this has been the best party they've ever done here. I, I'm having a great time with this. Yeah. Best party ever done. I mean, Maleficent is straight owning tonight. Evil Queen has been fantastic. Even Smee, uh, Hook and Smee are back. Uh, uh, Drizella and what's her name over there? <laughs> yeah, Anastasia. <laughs> Man, what a fun time this has been. And about 90% of this will be copyright protected, but that's okay. <laughs> projections that they do. I'm always too, I'm always blocked by a tra oh! The fire, I love the castle fireworks. Sometimes I feel like I like the fireworks they do at the castle more than the regular fireworks. I mean regular fireworks. Well, the fireworks they launch in Toontown. I like oh. those. I like the ones they shoot from Fantasyland. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very much Far. like the, the Halloween the party. Halloween part, yeah. yeah. You know that Ursula, she gets around. She's in every every Halloween uh show. She's like one of the most relevant. She's always messing with people. Fantastic. Yeah. She was in uh, Villainous. Had Carol sold Ursula because yeah. of her voice. Yeah. And she said, you know, I'm playing so round and out there. Yep. <laughs> you know yeah, maybe. Sure wish we were on the actual orbiter right now. Yeah, that was have to be an hour to get in and out of this. Yeah, the line is a little, a, I mean, the line is short, but it was too long. But physically, it would have taken me an hour oh, to get yeah. in and out of. Yeah, because... I'm really pregnant. She's, her center of gravity would keep her in that rocket for a, so a while. So we have to be there forever. I'm just going to stay in space. You guys go enjoy yourselves. I'm going to find out what... Saturn looks like. There's a boyfriend. Did I ever tell you that Liz has an irrational crush on Buzz Lightyear? I think she has a cute bottom. I mean, but after Toy Story 4, like, I'm over it. I think I'm over Buzz. Yeah, well, he wasn't his normal Buzz. Why did they make him dumb? I don't know! Yeah. So that bugged me a little bit. I think, no, in three. In three. Well, yeah, with like, the whole, like, Spanish Jesse thing, but, like, he was just, like, a himself. And then when he, like, had his breakdown. Oh, in two? In one. Oh, I thought you meant with his dad, when he... No, when he becomes... Oh, oh, with Mrs. Nesbitt. Yeah. No, I, you know, I just that seems so out of like out of left field. Why all of a sudden make him some simpleton? No, it was, and I was like, oh my buzz, you're not really my buzz. Yeah. Like, I was actually more like back on TV. He was like a cocky, self, self confident. Yeah, right. You know me. That's yeah. Guys I kind of like. I know, right? What, what am I doing here? <laughs> Twist. Ah, I'm not gonna shoot. 
I suck at this game anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna make it kind of difficult. No, don't make it any difficult. Pretty good arm, and she can catch well. Just putting that out there. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not a good batter. That's why. I, but you can catch. You can throw a football and a baseball. Oh, yeah. You don't throw like a girl. No, I. This guy, do you see me? It says walking. Oh, walking. Buzz really walks. Go, Buzz, go. <laughs> You thought you were real. <laughs> Not the time I thought it was an act. You're mocking me, aren't you? What about uh, a space ranger in training? We have so many clothes now, though. Hey, remember that one time we had a baby shower and got all kinds of clothes for our little girl? So we don't She's have so to buy spoiled. any of these. So. No, we don't have to buy anything. Because we're people love us and take good care of us, and it's too we much so to much handle. Good stuff. I know, we really did. I yeah. can't wait to like, she might have to like wear like three, well she probably will. Just We're just gonna, yeah, she'll just be like one of those bougie, bougie little babies that never wears the same thing twice. Yeah. <laughs> well that's it for tonight Fresh Baked. I hope you enjoyed our shows. Don't forget to like this video. Well, you know what, go back and watch yesterday's video and like that one too, that you watched. And as a matter of fact, this might even be the third video. I'm not sure how much coverage <laughs> we got tonight. There might be three. Uh, so like all of those, subscribe to our channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked. Hey, did you have fun tonight? I had 
so much fun. <laughs> I love dancing. What is I about really coming do. to Disneyland, no matter where you are your day, when you get here, you have the best freaking time. So it's been so much fun, and not unexpectedly, good time. I don't usually like dance parties because they're kind of, I feel like sometimes they, they try too hard. That was not a try hard it's night. so natural. And that was, a, like that was a natural list. fun night tonight. So, uh, and a lot of that had to do obviously with the exceptional, exceptional live entertainment at the park that made this fan of Disneyland very, very happy. And that's a good thing. So A plus for live entertainment, A plus for the cast members. You guys are amazing. We'll see you tomorrow, Fresh Bakers. We'll be back. I'll be back. You'll be back. She will be back. I will be back sometime. But we'll see you tomorrow. Fresh Bake! Busy, the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. I'm your host, David, and I'm standing atop the Main Street train station. Uh, you know, whatever you call it, the stairs. <laughs> and I was just looking at this view, and I thought to myself, have you ever seen anything quite so fantastic? I'm going to try and slide to the right here to get that flag flutter, because I want a nice, clean view of that castle. Look at how perfect that view is right there. With the trees behind it. You know, I never really fully appreciated the effect that those trees have in framing our castle. I look at castles sometimes from other parks and I'm often impressed. Like the Disneyland Paris Castle is framed beautifully depending on how you look at it. And I sometimes get jealous. I get jealous of the, uh, I, can't, I can't remember if it was, one uh, Tokyo or Hong Kong, but the way the trees frame the castle there, and I can't remember now, and I never really appreciated that we have something, you just have to look at it from the right angle, right? When we get down Main Street, when we get down to, to the hub, it loses some of that perspective. But this, I'm in love with the shot right now, you guys. Good morning, Fresh Bake, how are you? Got this fine view of, of Ian no, no, and no, Ron. No, <laughs> I know I was just going on and on about how beautiful that shot was that I just took that I'm really proud of myself for capturing at this moment. But uh, I, gotta, I gotta talk to Ian and I gotta talk to Ron here who's currently not sure if he should be in frame or not. He's Great. trying to decide. <laughs> I was slowly doing like... the creep. <laughs> It's fine. Ron, you're in frame. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Once again, Ron, fresh bake, fresh bake, Ron. Uh, let's walk down Main Street, guys. I want to go do something. I just like to, one of my favorite things when I come to Disneyland, as, as often as I can remember, is to start my morning up here. I don't even have to ride the train. I don't have to do anything here. I just like that establishing shot just the way Walt wanted. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a great way to Put yourself in the Disney mood. A couple things do that for you. Walking through that tunnel, right? That puts you in the Disney mood, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, walking down Main Street. Hearing that ding ding at the train coming in the station. Oh, that God. ding ding. Like, ding, ding, yes. Ding, ding. Like, and then your attention, please. Yeah. And oh my God, yeah. it's the best. It is the best. Uh, White Glove High Five is still a treat. Well, unfortunately, they only do that like right at rope drop, right though. Well, because I want to opening all those cast members then have to They go got work to do, yeah. So they can't stay on the street. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you don't get that when you ride the monorail in, I'll say that. Just going to put that out there for all you monorail lovers. Uh, 
I don't like coming in with the monorail. Do you? I mean, I don't do it often, but there's sometimes if it's a busy day and I'm coming in late, I'm like, you know what? I just need to get in the park. Don't you That's feel fine. like, though, when you land here in Tomorrowland, you're starting in the middle of the movie? I mean, sometimes like, that happens. You don't want that to happen, but sometimes that's what happens. Well, that's true. I, I'll, sometimes it, you're like, you know, I just got to get in there. I, it takes I can't you, wait it, for the next showing in two hours. I got to get in. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, we got a casualty. Somebody's lucky charms are not so lucky. Maybe the person was saved by dropping the charms. There you go. Lucky. That, hey, you know what? It's a tricky world out there. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, the, the walking down Main Street, uh, like you mentioned, stepping into the middle of the movie, is the credits. All these names yep. the windows is the opening credits to this movie. Very well observed, Ron. Might want to get out in the middle of the street. Little... I see that. We've got another uh, disaster <laughs> heading for us. Where are we going, you guys? I don't know. We always remember, they are real horses. They are very real horses. I know one thing on our agenda today is uh, 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 Galaxy's Edge. We're going to do that, but I don't want to lead off with that. I want to go find, I'm feeling very Disney right now, and I want to feel more Disney. So we got to figure out what we're going to do to keep that going. I could give a high five to a horse. But I can't do that. I know it's pretty Disney. What? Jungle Cruise. Yes. That's very Disney, isn't yes. it? Uh, it'll still give us. Are they still do the thing where they're not open until 12 or are we passed that? Oh, uh, I think we have passed that. Okay. Yeah. But it'll give us a chance also to check out the new entrance. We talked about this. Oh, yeah. That's uh, cool. What they're doing over there. So oh, let's, the hut. Yeah. let's cut to that. So there it is. That's, they, they built a new hut. It's kind of, you know what? I'm going to move forward a little bit. We're under a tree. They, now this hut, Ian, is pretty much... It's more like the, what, the opening day, the, the, the pre-tiki room. Right? Yeah, the pre-tiki... Which I didn't realize someone pointed that out. Yeah. It, I'm glad it's there. It's a little, it feels a little bit tall, but I imagine if there's... It is a little hut, taller green, than the old one. If some greenery goes in, that'll, that'll solve it. Well, uh, one thing I noticed if, when I'm looking at the old... Uh, the pre-tiki room entrance? I don't think it's post. done. This isn't done. No, not quite. Oh, well, I think because there's still scrim steps. So that tells you it's not. Done. Right. Well, there's two things that they can add here. They can add because uh, the original hut or whatever had like tapestries or or like art attached yeah. to the f the front of it. Onto the all the, the yeah new structure. So you could th th that's part of the sightline issue that you were talking about yeah. last week about how you could see Adventureland. Or, I mean Frontierland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, plus there was a lot of a lot more. Uh, I always forget this word, Ian. Plants. Plants. What's the word I'm looking for? Greenery? Boiling. No. Landscape. Landscaping. Thank you very much. You know, I don't know what it is. I have a vocabulary. It's a you good do. one. Would you like me to help you carry around the thesaurus? Would that help? Guess, I don't know. There's more. Yeah, maybe. Well, you're my thesaurus. How about that? I can't always be here. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, there, there was more landscaping right here, and I think that's probably what they haven't finished yet. Yeah, I mean, I is see a little bit of plant popping up behind the screen, so clearly stuff needs to grow. Yeah, like, like I, a lot. I know we've said before, plant, it takes just takes time. Why don't you know what grow. time? Like, you can buy it. It's dumb. It is, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> Screw! T just so so tired of time. I want it now. Uh, Anyway, so, but I, I do appreciate, I'm very glad, I hope that this was always their plan, was to, to no, re restore again, that. These things have long lead times, it probably was. Right, right, they have to That's have. That's why when the first one opened up again, I'm like, there's probably something coming, but at the moment, my knee jerks, I don't like it, but I know there's something coming. Yeah. Probably. It looked a little barren. Yeah. But it was weird because they didn't put the scrims up, I mean, it sat there like, they opened everything up, and then, and then they closed it again right away. Why, why not just keep going? I want to assume they're not as reactionary on the day, that kind of stuff, but maybe they are, maybe they are. You know, I'm starting to wonder just how reactionary they might be. But also, because if I assume they are, then I, that means I start imagining I have more influence than I really do, which I know I don't, and <laughs> well, I don't need that. I mean, in the general, like, Disney-verse, like, people speak as a collective. Yeah. You know, are they, do they, are they that but reactionary? It's like, well, only a couple dozen people on Twitter even who've been noticed. After, it is always the, the, the vocal like, major after majority. After a few of us are like, oh, that's opening. And then people are like, oh, yeah, that is. Yeah. Like, it's... Do you, hey, quick question. Do you, do you want Disney to be more reactionary or less reactionary? 
<laughs> yes or no? Uh, <laughs> I know, that's not a huge fun answer. That's, a, that's the most annoying answer. But in general, if you have a plan, I just keep your plan. Yeah. I, I think there are times where feedback is useful. Sometimes. Like, I guess if people were saying, oh, hey, this thing operationally is a problem, and they didn't think about it, oh, they're like, oh, maybe, maybe we should take it because that's operational, right? Like, there are places where feedback is useful. Yeah. What about you, Ron? For creating a oh, big sorry. plan, maybe not so much, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> those surveys still are having use. Yeah. I hate surveys. I guess I, I've already showed my hand. Uh, Ron? Uh, I think you take information that you have and create based on that. Like you definitely want to tell the story that you want to make. You want to be use your creative insights and tell your story. But you are using information that you have like previously, what has failed, what has not worked, and you want to use that productively in making decisions moving forward. Right. But retroactively changing because of a survey that comes yeah. saying they don't like something and then completely retconning the whole idea that you had is not good. I'm not a fan of that either. Would you, I, I don't like, I think that they should listen to us much less. Uh, w would it be fair to compare Disneyland or to equate Disneyland to something like a work of art? Theme parks are an art form, so yes. Would you, would you say Disneyland is, I don't know, I, I, I can't think, just name a, name a famous artist, Da Vinci. Uh, Ryan Johnson. Right, okay. <laughs> Ian loves Ryan Johnson. <laughs> I'm so excited for Knives Out. I know you are. I'm so excited. <laughs> I saw the last trailer. I was like, that's a good trailer. I like that last trailer. The first one didn't really move me, but this one did. There's a lot of good buzz coming out of all the film festivals. Yeah, so I've heard. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, is this an art, like, like, would you compare it to a work of art? No, uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of the interesting things about theme parks as an art form is that, A, there's a higher barrier to entry cost-wise, so people have more a more visual response because they have to physically invest more. Right. But also there's, because of the interactivity, like, I don't know. That's true. The, the physical permanence of it and means that the way people interact with it is very Did we just different. get photobombed? I think we did. Yes, I think that was up us. She was, yes. Because <laughs> yeah, yes, right, yes, for the yes. part, you read a book, you like it, you don't, you're done. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, that's away. right. You can't interact with, with the Mona Lisa the way we can interact with Disneyland. Yeah. Different art forms create different types of responses. Well, I asked that question because I want to know if Da Vinci ever did a customer satisfaction survey on one of I think, Well, I think that also gets into we live in a very different sort of world. No, I know. Right? Like, we're... Obviously, artists made art for a client, yeah. but it wasn't, oh, we're, I'm doing this for, Sometimes. for a corporation that's hired me and they own everything I make. There is commission work, right? yeah. There's a, there's just, okay, there's commission work, but all, things are now exist the way they're owned is very different than than someone just making a painting and yeah. they're done with it. Yeah. Uh, I realize this this is a, it's a ridiculous comparison, but it's just something that goes in my mind except that I want... I want Disney to treat this like that more if they could. I want them to express themselves. I know because because uh, they're, they're not. A, Da Vinci wasn't a corporation. Yeah. You know they're not behold the stockholders or anything like that. I I there's totally understand. That's artists with a single person with commission point of view. Like that's, there's a sing, right, there's a single stakeholder. Yeah. Versus a whole. But that's how this got created. That's what we fell in love with. Yeah. Was a single stakeholder's vision. Right. Exactly. And that's what we fell in love with as a community. So and we have to try to reconcile that with the fact that's know, not. It's, it's I am struggling art. sometimes with that, Ian. I struggle. Art. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Where'd that? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, okay. That's my soapbox for today, and all that because of this hut. Like, what is my problem? What? What? <laughs> but think about art. Wait, I would call think, that a problem. You, you observe something; it, it had an effect on Here's you. Here's why. Want to discuss it? Think why did that happen? Even yeah. that That's sign, though, yeah. I believe is art because that was a. Tr they, we don't know why it's that high, but I guarantee you it's that high because of a sight line somewhere else. There's a sure. reason that is specifically there. That's art. Yeah. That's beautiful. What's up to that? Yeah. I have a great idea. Let's go see some art on the Jungle Cruise. Yes, and hear a lot of dumb jokes that I love so <laughs> love much. love dumb jokes. Those are great jokes. <laughs> I just had a thought. I wonder... I want to have like a Dole Whip day. Ian? Just have different types of Dole Whip? No, I want to like... You ever heard the phrase or the, the, the old uh, 
song from Coke, uh, I'd like to buy the world of Coke. Oh man. I wonder if would it would I go broke if I like bought yes. a bunch of fans Dole Whips? Yes. <laughs> Really quickly. I probably would, huh? I want to buy... The individual uh, whips are what? I, five, six, they're five six, bucks, six. yeah. How about you offer Tahin instead? Oh, the what? Oh, Tahin. They buy <laughs> six bucks. It's five men, yeah, it's six bucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And there's no uh, AP discount there, is there? Is there? Okay, well... Maybe maybe someday I'll buy like five of you at Dole Whip. I can probably do that. I want to. I just want to buy somebody at Dole Whip today. You can still do that. Just uh, well, I only I only mentioned that because while we were setting up or getting ready to head over to Jungle Cruise, we watched a gentleman throw away a whole Dole a whole Dole Whip. That's pretty much. I cry. <laughs> right. Maybe a third off of it, and I was like. I'm like, if nothing else, what? you spend money on that. You, just, I, you don't like to give it to someone else. Like, you just, you what are you doing? Money. Why did you get it? <laughs> How do you throw away a Dole Whip? I'm like, if nothing else, just for the cost sunk. Yeah. yeah but that's six bucks. That's six bucks, man. How did they not like it? That implies they didn't like it. Is that our cue? Yeah, they or that implied either. I think I, one has to assume that they at least liked it a little bit. Or they valued something else above that. They felt like it wasn't worth keeping the dough to do the other thing that they were trying to do. I think you do both. <laughs> wow! Like, how do you? How did? How has the dough been such low value, such low regard? <laughs> and now here we are again, overanalyzing a thing. Fifteen minutes. I'm not sure about that. Ticket agent. Hey, Ron, will you get us a couple of tickets for the Jungle Cruise? Gotcha. All right, thanks. They're free today, though. Well, I guess we don't need tickets. Or halfway for half the fare, but it's I don't understand. Is it free or half, half fare? Well, normally it's halfway for half fare. It's days. Oh, okay. You only have to pay half if you only go one way, which for most people, that's how it works out. <laughs> truth well yeah I mean I don't know like the actual ride attraction is more of a, a true life adventure right but the, the original inspiration was to do a, a boat ride based you know because of the Africa that kind of boat uh, that kind of excursion yeah I love, love that movie yeah. I've never seen it really? you ever seen Africa Queen I have not all free and yeah and uh, Catherine yeah. Hepburn yeah Tours departing daily. They don't make them like that anymore, do they? Yeah. 90 minutes basically of a one shot. A, ni a 90 minute one shot with two, with just two, uh, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a one stage play. Has anybody ever been in this yeah. part of the queue? <laughs> Have you ever been in this queue? I've never. I have once. Really? I think it might have been like during holiday times so it was super busy. So they're like, we need all, because again, they don't have to break this out very often. They usually go to the extra space yeah, back yeah. there. Yeah, back there. I actually did go out here once. Oh yeah, another right. Nope. Yeah, that was a weird because there was a, like just one little quick switchback out there, and then we're right back. Oh, this is great. You know, this is it. Almost makes it worth it having a long queue here because you get to like Indiana Jones and uh, Millennium Falcon. You know, Smuggler's Run. Taking the full queue sometimes gives you a better experience. We were just talking about that over there, where it's nice to see a little bit of a different vantage point that you don't see every day yeah. because you're not up here. Every yeah. Day. I mean, this is this is great. I love this. Hey, look, it's Spear. I don't think we're gonna get him today, but he's one of my favorite skippers. But this is lovely. They should, you know what they should do? Fresh bake. They should, they should just make a queue ride. They they joke about that. They joke about oh, uh, I think it was The Simpsons did a bit where it was just a queue and that was it. And then there was no actual ride at the end of the queue. <laughs> and I would actually, I would go on the queue ride. I think I would. Well, I mean, that's what a walkthrough attraction is. Right, yeah, basically, yeah. Indiana Jones is, no, Indiana Jones delivers a lot of show at the end, but. I know the first time that I experienced that for real was 
Heimlich? I didn't know. I really didn't know. Me and Ben, me yeah. Champ, didn't know. Stood in line, got on it, sat down, and it was what it was. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. Even him at like five was like, we're no, done. That's one of those where you, the, the show, for me anyway, it's up to me. I'm the, I, you know, I gotta. I, the entertainment I bring for that because right. you you gotta like like Ian says you gotta put yourself in the moment and say okay I'm I'm in Bugs Land now I'm in the, I'm in Bugs Life movie and I'm Heimlich and you have to really sell it to yourself a little bit and then it becomes super fun. Well, the second time I did it I would say yes. yeah. The first time I just didn't know what. Right, right. Going. <laughs> you just you're like okay the, the, you get to the. You think it's the beginning? <laughs> I was waiting for something that was never gonna so, come. <laughs> right, we're here already? Uh, 
python there. Uh, interesting fact about pythons, you know when they're fully grown, they can weigh up to 5,000 pounds and jump over 50 feet. <laughs> the only animal chocolate can do that. So there he is, Trader Sam. Uh, Sam just got a promotion. Head salesman. You know, Sam is very gracious. He actually invited me over to his house for dinner, and I told him, I said, you know, Sam, uh, your wife makes a terrific stew. He said, yeah, but I'm going to miss her. <laughs> I told Sam this, too. I said, you know, I really don't like your brother, though. Oh, I said, that's okay. Just eat the noodles. <laughs> I like discovering new skippers with new jokes. Even skippers named Skip. Kip. 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 Why did I say Skip? <laughs> because it was there. It was right there. Okay, obviously my favorite joke was the... The strong rule of three on that one. The, yeah, the what? Oh, the strong rule of three, three, yes. Well, you know what's funny? He, we're talking about the 5,000 pounds, 50 feet jit bit that he did. Oh, he had one of the trouble to do that. He didn't say it for the tiger, though. Right. No, he didn't. No, he did it. He did it. The, three, the, the ones he did it were the tiger, the elephant. Did he do the tiger? He said the first one. Oh, I thought he, because in my head, I'm like, he didn't do the, he didn't do the bit. No, the first one was the tiger. Oh, okay. Because he didn't say, oh, they can jump 20 feet. Luckily, we're only 15 feet. Right, right. Oh, that's what he didn't do. He just said it. That's right. Because he was, he was setting up, he was, he was, he was giving up that joke to set up Right. Uh, that's what I noticed. But he didn't, he didn't do the, yeah. the, the payoff on that bit. And that, that's what, I'm like, that's weird. He no, just, it's, it's, are we doing it's, it's, a factual tour? Of, right. <laughs> setting up another. And I was down for a factual tour, actually, if he was going to go that way. Yeah. <laughs> but when he did that, when he did that, oh my God. <laughs> I lost my mind. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's going to have to be at least one more. Yeah, yeah rule right. three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of new jokes. What's that? A lot of new jokes that I hadn't heard yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one that I... Ghosted the shoe. Yeah. Oh. My favorite. I'm just gonna say I that. wish I could have got him because I couldn't. Yeah. He was. Your angle, like, my angle was bad. Like, that one particularly got me because I knew so many times they go crazy. With I'm the waiting. Gun. I've always waited for them to do that. Every time, like, I get disappointed now right. when they fire the gun. Like, I want to hear right, right, right. something, you know, the I love you bit or. Yeah. His uh, uh, I'll scare him when I scare him. I'll scare him. Let's yeah. move. Yeah, let's together. move in together. <laughs> his, his simple uh, huh moment was oh. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, that got huh. tickled me. <laughs> yeah. huh. uh, all right, cool. So, some of his bits were good. I think for me, the Jovery with Jovery was a little yeah. higher than I care for. Like, I've said before, Jovery is it's, yeah. it's a bad. There's a balance between. There's some hit and misses. There's, yeah. there's some balance between seeing like I'm actually tired and over this, or I'm jokingly seeing like right. I'm tired and over this. So right. You kind of have to strike a balance right in there. Yeah, he, so he walked me, that line. The times really a little more to the I actually am tired right now. He walked that line. It suited his personality. So it did. I it was that was Kip. We got yeah. Kip. We got Kip. Galaxy's Edge? Galaxy's sure. Edge? Sure. Right Let's times. do it. Galaxy's Edge. So it's been, what, uh, five, four, four months? What, since it opened? Yeah. It opened May 31st. End of May. June, May, yeah, so. Yeah, four months. I guess. Yeah. Uh, we had, one of the things that we had wondered about, assumed what happened was, was what would happen to this little trail right here. It's still fairly peaceful. Yeah. I mean, there's more people than there were, but like it's... But we just thought this this would lose all of its charm. You know, hearing yeah. the, the and sounds that, and all that. I, but then they added a sign, which... That which sign's great. I wish, I wish Can we do a whole segment on that sign? Honestly, we could, but I don't know if that's what we're here for. <laughs> I could do it, yes. I could talk about why I love that sign. But then it also turned into me talking about how much I love the Country Bears and Mark Davis. Uh, so. Well, you know, uh, Country Bears are a thing. Yeah. People do love the country bears. I love this right here. And I love that I can still hear the birds and all that. That's what I love. I still I love how much these trees have filled out. Yeah. Painted black with the, the galaxy far, far away on this path. I wanted that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> No, that would be a little I, on the nose, yeah, wouldn't I, it? I prefer, <laughs> yeah. I prefer the more subtle. Approach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I'm taking you guys in here to Galaxy's Edge right now, uh, well, it's twofold because we haven't been in a while, but to talk about why we haven't been here in a while. <laughs> I mean, I pop in and out. I, yeah. I, well, I mean, as a, yeah, as, but there is a there is a conversation to be had about that in terms of one of the concerns that people had initially 
when they were even discussing Galaxy's Edge was how is it going to fit in the rest within the rest of Disneyland? Won't it feel out of place and disconnected? And you know the conversation would go back and forth between you know you don't want Disneyland to interfere with with Star Wars and Star Wars to interfere with Disneyland. Hey, 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 how are you? Uh, and so one of the defenses of that concern was that well they're going to build a big berm around it and it's going to be sequestered yeah. from the rest of the land there will be no interference from disneyland and there will be no interference into disneyland which problem they solved which, which then other folks like me and others like that's both good and bad hey, hey guys hey. how are you nice hat <laughs> Uh, yeah, problem solved, except it's, now you've created another it, problem. Yeah, it's right. good for these, for these Star Wars experience itself, but it means it's not, again, it's, it means you're just attaching something to the park rather than integrating it into it. Right, so to that point, there's Chewbacca. Uh, let's pause here for a second. Um, when we uh, are going through, we just went through uh, Adventureland, right? Yeah. And we could have easily just slid right into New Orleans Square. Yeah. I feel like going to New Orleans Square, we're just going to slide right in. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no sense of that when you when no. you don't you have to have intent to it's, go to Galaxy's Edge. I mean, I think this is also just part of one of the drama too. Once you create quote unquote immersive, yes, yeah, yeah, is that when you want to do to that to go to the you're there. There's no there's nothing else. Yeah. Well, now you what, you can regain that, but you lose the benefit of the way things transition yeah. and flow. Yeah. yeah, it's its own thing entirely. It's its own destination. It's a, it, and that, it's, just, it's a different design, design process. Yeah. You need to get, it takes a minute to get after it. Right, and that's what you were kind of alluding to earlier when you came here, is that it, 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 we are now completely removed from Disneyland. I have no sense of Disneyland None. anymore. And it is, I mean, it, I like that about being in here, but I, I don't like that there isn't, I, I can't casually transition transition into the into the land and it does and by that token because of that i also feel like i need more while i'm here and that's where people are feeling the lack i think is that now that we've made this commitment to come to galaxy's edge we've 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 made that detour from our normal uh casual walk through the park and we, we've taken that extra step entertain me right it's true and now but you're like oh well there's just some trees and a robot or not not even a robot a chewbacca and a ride i don't know if maybe just i adjust the things quicker but i don't know because in my mind like no one land should be your whole day anyway so no no I, i'm so not saying I, that so is like, the case I, walk, I don't think okay this thing has to fill tons of hours otherwise it's like, i'm like it's just not, like it'll fill whatever part i need at that time and i'll go somewhere else that's yeah. the way it should be let's keep walking I feel like I could step in here for the Ronto Roaster and me uh, pass out. through, grab a Ronto Roaster, <laughs> pass out. Uh, now, when I these these questions that I'm asking, I don't want anybody or or talking about. Don't misunderstand me. I absolutely am in love with Galaxy's Edge, but two things on that. One, I'm a I'm a themed environment guy, like, like you, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. I'm here for this right here. This is why I'm here. I want to feel like I'm in a place. Take me away. Take me away and put me somewhere else. And they've done a magnificent job of that. Uh, I'm also an easy mark because I'm just, you know, I love this. <laughs> I love a lot of the things that they do. So it's hard for them to disappoint me in some cases. Uh, so as far as that goes, don't mistake this as like some kind of criticism. I'm just practicing empathy because there are people out there who don't feel the way we do or don't they don't uh consume disneyland the same way that we, we're all different in that sense yeah uh, so for some they don't want to just walk down a path and and hear birds or whatever creatures in the in the in the, in the bushes over here they want they want to be hit overhead with an e-ticket or right. you know what i mean Anybody by the way should we be getting a fast pass or anything or they don't have fast pass. yeah not no. here i keep why do i that's what so look it's right they do build they do a phenomenal job here really because when you're entering it's quiet yeah and then you're going through this path yeah. and like i said this morning going through so the millennium like falcon by uh olga's you start to go down yeah. that path and you hear the jets in the back and you hear the thing like, yeah it is prime high energy at that yep. point. let's walk through the uh market the market yeah and i that's another thing while we're here uh, there have been criticisms about this just being a fancy mall, you know, for, for Star Wars stuff. I would just say, A, have you been paying attention to the parks the last 10 years? Right, yeah. 
Uh, but I would I would argue that we're gonna get that anyway. Yeah. Also, why not make? But also, like, okay, New Orleans Square is that. Yeah. It has been there for, what, 50 years? I think one of the most popular ones. Yeah. Like, if, if, if I'm going to get merchandising anyway, make it show. And they've done that. They've turned merchandising into show. That's the one thing that Chopic is good at. Now, is the pricing on that? Yeah. It's questionable at times. Well, you don't have to buy anything. I'm just here. Again, it feels to me like I'm in a Galaxy's Edge or a Star Wars market. Right. And, and I, I like that they've made it as much as part of the show as they have. I appreciate that in the sense that I know that I'm going to get it anyway. I'm going to get I'm going to get sold something anyway. You might as well entertain me while I'm doing it. I, I, I prefer that. So I know people think that is a negative. I think it's a positive. I think it's a tremendous positive. I love it. I mean, they even took Coke and turned it into a detonator for the land. They sure did. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> look at this whole, key, this whole thing that they set up here just for popcorn. Yeah. Right? That's just for popcorn. Yeah. Is there another restaurant anywhere that approximates Ronto's, Ronto Roasters? In terms of putting you in a, in, in the scene to get a, a Ronto wrap. I don't know. We're at the Toy Darien market where you can get some authentic Toy Darien plushes. This is another thing I appreciate. I appreciate they, they didn't give us just standard generic merch. Yeah. They they tried to they tried. Yeah. They tried. I don't know if it's working, but they tried. And I I, I, yeah, I like, think that. I've seen these things in Clone Wars and Rebels and Resistance. Yes. I'm like, oh, I can have one of those. Yes. Super cool. <laughs> I love that guy. What is that? What? It looks like a tooth got pulled. So it, think of it like a, it's, a re, it's a representation of a tooka cat. The thing that they have at the, as the pet the creature saw. Okay. It's a very more abstract oh, yeah. toy representation of it. Sure. Sure, okay. And that's the thing that has shown up in the animated stuff. I mean, I don't get it, but I like it. Remember the being of Rogue One, Jin has one of that's these? That's right. I thought it was a plush, though. No. It was, to it's, it's, it was wooden? It's a wooden, like, Stormtrooper doll. So that's that's Jin's that's Jin's toy. I mean, I don't think they're saying it's literally that one. Well, I mean, it's as close as you're gonna get. I haven't seen anything like that. What does this guy do? Oh, you know when there, there's a, the, the people there's like those like little wooden frogs. Oh, the Star Wars version. Of one. Interesting. How much are those things? This is twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Oh, here we can summon Hellraiser with this. Oh no, that's a different toy. It's a wooden puzzle cube. A, did you see the music box before? Uh, I don't... Is that, I it's the Imperial March. It's the Imperial, okay. I can't hear, there's a lot of acoustic noise here. Well, can you guys have it here? It's the Imperial March Got as it. a music box. Yeah. Which is neat. I like the shot. I just don't happen to have a chance to play <laughs> <laughs> You won this time, Blue. Outlander. <laughs> you won the small task, but you won the right small task. Oh my god, what is Ron doing? <laughs> Breaking you by. He's ruining Ian's bit. That's one of the ones. Yeah, I think it's a musical. I mean, this is a nice thing to have just yeah. to have, right? Unfortunately, it's ten bucks for four dice. Right. Which four dice that are that's actually like, like dizzy. It's, and it's just a, it's a fifty-fifty cube. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's and just fifty-fifty. Yeah. Like I have some that I bought when they were eight bucks. Now, why do you need four of them? Uh, because they can't possibly because it looks dumb to buy one die. Well, it, yeah, but it, it's an easier sell here if there's more dice. That's all. But what am I going to do with four of them? Who knows? But it does. But it, it looks weird. If to it's a chance die, you just a 50-50. Well, you only need one die, right? Yeah. But these you can shake. Yeah, he's saying that you can shake multiple die. You can't. Really... Well, okay. So if I roll four, it's it's again. It's just it's the appearance of value. It's the appearance of value as a product. <laughs> That's, it, should, that's, it should come with the cup and a quick, easy, and, year old game. And yeah, like a Yahtzee. Like something, yeah, exactly. Well, they do sell the Samok decks, which have their own. Now, were those here before? Yeah. yeah. I right. bought one back on opening day or maybe yeah. the preview day. Have yeah. you figured out how to play Samok yet? Yeah, it comes with a rule set. Oh, it does? Yeah. Is they, it don't, fun? they don't just give you a bunch of weird cards and two dice and say, hey, figure it out. Well, that's how Pokemon's been doing that for decades. You do voices better. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Darth Vader's dancing. I would say 
the little uh, sand car that Ron has here is very cool. So yeah, it, and there's a space to put a, to, like two little wooden Jawas on pegs, which I cannot. It's do. tough to do with adults with fingers. Oh, I can't. Like, it's easier yeah. for a kid to do, but it's very cute. You need like uh, like what. Uh, Shipbuilding tools that you for the bottle. Right. Yeah. Is that just a? It's a Death Star game? like ball maze, but you know there's and there's the trench. It's all the trench run essentially, right? The trench run. <laughs> Stay on target, Ian. Oh, oh, okay. These are always tricky. What are the odds that when you get here, you'll say almost there? Uh, because you point that out, I won't. <laughs> but would you have? Maybe. In your head, at least. Oh, oh no, you're, you're it's there. A, it's away. <laughs> Oh, so, no, we impacted on the surface. <laughs> they basically just themed the games that we played. Like very simple, very simple toys in Star Wars, yeah. Like a rocking horse. Although you can't buy that. And then how much is that? I want to know. Yeah, that thing right there, right? Very briefly, I swear that's the one that Hasbro, Hasbro did like a crowdfunded version. I don't know if that's actually one, but it was the exact same scale. But they only sold them as like a crowdfunding thing because they're so massive. They're like, we don't want to commit to making this. Right. Yeah, no, that's a lot of... That's true, but yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I love that. He fell asleep. Rathy's a Rath star. Where are we going? I guess so. Should we try to uh, smuggle something? We're gonna see what the, uh, the wait time for the application process is. Today. Okay, all right. This right here, Ronto Roasters, is an epic success for me. Like this, they could not have done this better. There's even an animatronic right there. I know. How do you not love this? Long Pratt song barbecue spits. They're ours, literally, right? Wait, where are they? Oh, these over here. Yeah. Do they import those from Tatooine? Or? They might be native on multiple planets. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you know that feeling where you're just like, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm experiencing right now. I'm happy to be here. Good. <laughs> Ooh, he's talking. <laughs> Stop talking. So if those are wand rats, what are what are these then? I'm not sure. Maybe it's that thing that uh, Anakin was riding in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. That's about the right size, right? It could be like a younger one. Yeah. I know they I know 
Racer Shack Roast at Dr. Day 7. And it looks like kind of cow like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, hey, can we recognize the, 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 the feet? Those are. That I don't know. Again, it could be, but I don't know. Those look like talons. It's bird like. Right? What, 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 what am I doing? You're, you're allowing yourself to be in the world. I am. I'm, I'm in it, aren't I? That's good, David. You're doing well. <laughs> you know, what he's doing, Fresh Bake, and I know it's noisy. He's. I have a thing where I'm like all show all the time. I'm trying to encourage you to let yeah. himself be present. <laughs> be present. Let's be present. <laughs> what did we find out what the weight is? Oh, sorry, I thought we just walked over here. I, oh, okay. I, I didn't actually open the app. I right thought you. Here. Okay. You know, here, but we're going this direction anyway. So yeah, that's true. I still haven't. Uh, I still haven't done the the play park stuff. I enjoy it, and, but I, I, I guess one of the things I don't know how, the way we do show how much you could, show, how much is the jokes is a lot just running around back and forth. Doing yeah. Stuff. I don't see. Uh, yeah, is that 60? I can see it goes back yeah, it's stage, deep. which is, uh, I'm mean, getting yeah, the line moves, but that's still a bit of a heavy weight. That is a long wait. Well, I'm torn, you guys. It's 80 minutes standby, which I would prefer to do, but I don't want to wait for 80 minutes. It's 80 like, from that spot. Well, I, what's inside. I mean, you can see the queue out here. That's. That's a that's a beefy 80. That's all of 80 out there, I think. Right? Yeah. That means they're using pretty much all... It looks like they're going backstage, too. That means they're going to the backstage overflow, overflow, and using a whole lot of switchbacks. Now, we can go single rider, but we missed the queue. You know what? Let's just do it. We're here. We got to do this. Hello, hello, my friends. I am Hondo Onaka, and this is Onaka Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering the opportunity of a lifetime. I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. Pilots to navigate, engineers to operate the ship, and gunners to defend the shipments. And that is where you come in. Oh, the Millennium Falcon. Oh no, for some very fast and very profitable expeditions. I was watching Last Jedi uh, two nights ago. Is this is this where they tucked in Rose? Probably, very likely. Right at the end. I feel likely. like that is the area. Probably. Are they rushing us through? There's not a there's often not a lot of time in here to enjoy how amazing this area is. This drawer is. That's where the texts are. Yeah. Dude, right here, Fresh Bake. Right, they, they may have moved them out before they loaned the ship to Hondo. They may have, like, you know what? You know what you, yeah, you don't necessarily want to keep Sacred Jedi texts when Hondo's around. When he, he's like, oh, that's profits. Would he? He would, wouldn't he? He would sell those he for profit. Would. He would sell you your own mother. <laughs> but for a good cause, I'm sure, because... Yeah, the, pro the cause of profiting Hondo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gunners, you clear the path. Pilots, line up behind the train. And engineers, you harpoon that precious cargo. Move out, my friends. See you in the cockpit. Life will be in the cockpit, of course. Think of this. You're still here. Don't go. Don't like be severe, right? Okay. The mic is not going to be bad. It's just the left one is like so. I destroyed everything. My daughter's going to be Quickly buckle your seatbelts. Right and left. Move your stick to fly right and left. 
I was just about to say that. Oh, right. 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 Pull back on the stick to fly out. And push forward to fly down. Right pilot, made the jump to light speed. Yeah, I agree. They dove in with 
details and this is whole land and it's amazing. And they have like the little laser burns. Did you see yeah. cutting out these holes? The yeah. laser burns all yeah. against the wall right yeah. there is a spectacular. The the, yeah, the last one's there for me, they exploded it out. transition right here. Right? Galaxy's Edge. Frontier Lane. But right at that moment, it doesn't, it's not jarring. Well, because they, they, they cross-fade it with some rock work down here, right? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Land, I love that's damaged. Yeah. Uh, it's not, but they made it that way. They sure did. So good. So good. And the other thing that I like artistically is when you go into uh, uh, Galaxy's Edge, they created it so it's a swipe, like the film editing. How yeah. Oh yeah. Like the, yeah, the vertical yeah. wipe. And, the, and it yeah. does have that effect. Yeah. Hey, that Star reminds Wars me. is also still the only modern film series that can get away with wipe transitions. That's I used cool. to put a lot of wipes into the show. Yeah. I, uh, I, I enjoyed that for a little while. They work great on the Halloween stuff. They're beautiful. <laughs> well, no, I mean just a, like just a, a traditional Star Wars wipe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hey, hard to make them look good. You have to do it. I want to do that, I think. Thunder? Let's yeah. Let's see what Fast Pass is for. Yeah, let's check out the Fast Passes for Big Thunder. Well, we were going to ride Big Thunder, but... Uh, it's uh, down, and the closest Fast Pass is 3.30. <laughs> that's a slow pass, Ian. Oh, that, that's a stopped pass, right? I wonder what happened to the You Are Courageous. You Are Arrested. I think you might be feeling a bit timid. That, so they got walked off right there, didn't they? It possibly, I get. It's possible they they ran it and stopped it at that right point. Yeah, it could be. Well, that's that. By the way, it was down at the moment. So. so no big thunder. I really miss big thunder. It's been a few minutes since uh, we've had to a chance to enjoy big thunder. What else can we do while we're in Frontierland? This, look, it looks like it's two. See? That's what you do, you just do this. And that actually is two. Two eggs. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you can see the thing about magic, 
is that you actually have to understand that something's not able to happen before. That's true. <laughs> so this might just be a tad under the where the world becomes solid. Land. All right. Well, let's see. Well, you. My guess is you guys are here a lot. That's my guess. All right. Just a, a few just times. A bit. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. All right. So would you agree? That uh, those are like cards to you. Uh, how how good is your uh, shuffling? Terrible. All right, well let's skip you then. <laughs> All right, ready, sir? This is your big moment. Are you excited about this? Well, you sit right there. You comfy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> name for me a number between one and ten. Six. Six. Yes. And then you're going to name a suit. Clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds. Heart. So that is the six of hearts. That makes sense? That's where this gets interesting. Two years old. Watch this kid. He's going to do something amazing. Are you ready? Of course, I, I feel like I'm about to use a child as a trained monkey. Here we go. Ready? Touch a card, my friend. Just grab a card out. Just grab it out. Grab it out. Shut it out. Six of hearts. Six. Is it the six of hearts? Oh my god. Six of hearts. Here we go. Some cards for me. And I can shuffle. Yeah, I can. All right, here we go. Ready? May May. Uh... No, you, sir, with the, the new fangle tie box. You, you give me a uh, number from one to ten out loud. Go. Nine. Nine this to be clear, you mean the number nine, you're not German and saying you do not want a number. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I'm okay. Swedish. Swedish? Yeah. Oh, is that is, is nine? It's kind of similar. Yeah. <laughs> like this, ready? I'm gonna go for the nines. I'm gonna go here, this is good. Ready? I'm gonna go like this, you say stop for me. Just say yeah, say stop, whatever you want. That counts. That counts. So yeah, here you go. So I believe that's a nine, a nine, what? a nine, what? a nine. What? Wait. What? Alright, so I'm gonna find the four aces with one hand. Four aces, one hand. Four aces, one hand. They're gonna shuffle. Alright, not this hand though. This hand here. Oh. Alright, so you sir, what is your name? Ian. Did you have a good time at the expo? I liked it too. Let's check those out. We'll make sure I say what I say they are, I say they're aces. That's what they are. Uh, I don't think people want to see is there any more of those in there, which they're not. Nope. Um, now that's where this hopefully gets semi-impressive. Yeah, I got that. Oh here. Uh, just here, just a, tr a quick trick just for the camera. Here you go. Like that for me. Here you go. I mean, I believe it will still be a trick for you guys, but it'll, it, I don't have to have. You don't have to have much participation. What's what's that card, sir? Oh, that was Ace of Diamonds. Okay, and then this is the Ace of Hearts. Okay, just for the camera. It's just fun. Yeah. What, what just? They changed everything. <laughs> what just happened? They, Two case in these situations. Alright, folks, it's like we ain't got a new room. We're gonna have to go back. As soon as the Columbia sets sail, we will proceed into Brazil landing. Wait. What? I see, I'm all you into thinking I'm stupid. You ever see the trick where the guy takes the big silver rings and then he lets them together? Sure. Those are expensive. These, these are easy. So, get this. So they're making you know, them a lot easier to handle. So look at that. That's there. That's there. The idea is I'm going to make it look like the bands are going to link. Right? Now if you're kids, you might think of this as Cat's Cradle. Because obviously then I would obviously have the things hidden here and it's just looped around. But when I don't have that, I can show you. Wait, that's when you can see that it's actually pretty good. Oh yeah, see? Right. Big fists. Thank you. I'll come to you. Alright, so the idea is that the band's gonna go this way, not this way. 
because when it goes that way, that's not that impressive, yeah. especially for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta get the man to go in this direction. While he's holding. Right. So you can see I'm definitely on this side. I love how, I love how you're like looking cool. Yeah, so I don't cool. trust you. Yeah, no one should. <laughs> We've done our full loop. We're yeah. parking. And we had a delight. We did have a yeah. delight. Thank you very much. That was great. Uh, yes, sir. So, magic on the Mark Twain. That's the thing that just happened. We did that. There's more magic, though, you guys. More magic. They do a show out in front of the, big, or, uh, the Golden Horseshoe also, which we're going to see later. Before that, we thought this would be a good time to do a little something, something that I love, and that's a ride on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And while we're in Frontierland, it's uh, not the most intense one, but it's no. one of the most fun. It is the very definition of the intersection of thrills and themed environments. It doesn't get any better than Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Expedition Everest is probably right along with it. I've never been on that, so I, I wouldn't know. I'm like, I'm not, yeah. I can't say one's better than the other, but I'm like, they're on. I've seen, the queue's pretty amazing from what I've seen, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are we good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, okay. We just saw the, uh, the the act on the Mark Twain, though. It was, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but... That was a little lo-fi for magic. But to be fair, there was also a two-year-old and a three-year-old yeah. who didn't quite have the energy to be impressed yet. Because uh, you were saying you saw some videos where the guy was doing some pretty, uh, pretty progressive magic with the with the ball, the three cups and the ball. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was. But that was on the street, not on the Mark Twain. Yeah, it was on. It was somewhere in front of uh, the horseshoe. What did you What did you think overall, though, of of the magic that was done? I mean, yeah. all, you know. It, Aside from it being lo-fi, like it was, it, was it enjoyable? It, I thought it was enjoyable. I definitely did because it was. It fits. The, it fits the theme. It fits the yeah. twin. Yeah, like, it does. And he was the performance by the magician was fantastic. He was cool. Yeah, I liked him. Funny. Well, you could tell he was like, guys, no, these are the tricks, guys. These are the tricks. What Can I get a little something from you? <laughs> I think that was part of the whole part of the act, though. I think a part of it was because uh, a lot of people were for a second, like, oh, my God, we're just like, like so yeah. there wasn't a lot of Right, no, he, mis he mistook our speechlessness right. for not being amused, I guess. Although that could have been part of his act also. Uh, yeah, I thought I was the one, I, I, I enjoyed the show, and I liked the addition uh, to Frontierland. I liked that they did do that my only... My only uh, thing would be, I didn't get to see the river. Oh, I know. I, you know, I didn't even know where it was. <laughs> we never saw the river. We were in that little sitting area there for the whole time. And I suppose we could have gotten up and walked out on our own. Right. But uh, I think it would be cool if he could maybe do something. I don't know if he can do it like well, it's out there on the deck. It's definitely mutually exclusive. Yeah, probably. You're either looking at the river or looking at him. Right. That's true, huh? <laughs> if I were a magician, I wouldn't want a bunch of people looking at the river, like not even paying attention to my magic. You do need a captive audience. Uh, but okay, we'll go, we'll go check out the, the other events here in a little bit. But for now, let's go on a wild ride in the middle of a suburban metropolis. Not quite. A wild ride by your grandma's house. Uh, a wild, a wild ride uh, in, the, in the wilderness. There we go. All right, I did it. Hey, can we can we do a Tinder ride on this?
profile it, man. You're getting thrown around up there. I am like a rag doll. You are a rag doll, Ian. I have, do not have the weight to hold myself in place. <laughs> hold on to the bar for dear life. Yep. Stalking this guy. We're straight up stalking this magician. <laughs> We're not messing around, man. <laughs> we, we heard uh, there was a magic guy that puts on quite a show. Well, well, well. How are you all? Come here. It's much more impressive when you come here. Holly, you know. She looks brave. You guys are some here. Okay. <laughs> That's the first time we've had that request. <laughs> Good. I'm John. They, uh, I'm new here in Frontierland. They uh, were trying to get together a small uh, poker game, but uh, no one wants to play with me. Would you like to see why they don't want to play with me? Yes. Uh, this is uh, kind of a neat thing. So we'll start off with a, a class bit where uh, someone actually selects a card. Okay. Oh, here. Reach in there for me, we'll move out a card. Okay. Anyone at all. You got it. Show around all the lovely people. Everybody got it? Alright, now here's the idea. I'm gonna go like this, Jessica. You say stop whenever you like. Say okay. stop. Stop. Is that fair? Yeah. Pretty pretty fair? Well, wasn't doing anything, no manipulation. I will show you an amazing thing. Because I know this is not your card, I'm also certain that this is not your card. But if I snap my fingers, I can get one card to reverse itself, you see. Right there inside the center of the deck. See, one card, one card only. See? And this card here is the Queen of Hearts. Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds. I didn't say it was your card, I said that was the Queen of Diamonds. <laughs> I reversed the card, that's all I was saying. I never said it was going to be yours. You were jumping to conclusions. <laughs> what was your card? Did I tell you? Yeah, I asked. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> The Ace of Diamonds. Oh, Ace of Diamonds? Oh, that's funny, because yeah. Ace of Diamonds is the card I normally keep underneath my bell over here. Stop it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you pull out a new one, get a new one. I don't want the ace diamonds again, get a new card. So grab out a new card. Yeah, whatever you want. Where are you going? <laughs> 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 Let's go. Oh, Jessica. Jessica, show the new card around to everybody. Everybody see Jessica's card? Okay, Jessica, I'm gonna go like this. You say stop whenever you like. Stop. Place your card. Place your card back. All right, now Jessica, I have three chances to find your card. If I cannot find your card on the third shot, you receive 100 American dollars. What? Yeah, not from me, from that guy there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. Let's see here. I hit this. There you go. There. One card reversed itself. Ready? Are you the right? Yeah. Oh, thanks. So I got that on the first try. None of you care. All right. Yeah, well done. Well done. You pick a new one. We need a new card. Not the two of hearts. Pick a new one. All right. New card. New card. Oh, that's the same one. No, I need a new card. Not the two of hearts. Just pick out a new card. Grab that. Take it out. Show around everybody. <laughs> Different. I don't know what you're doing. How are you even doing that? Right. What are you doing? Yeah. That's too hard. I'm trying to help you. Oh. Oh. Like, seriously. Here, I'll go slow like this. You say stop. I'll put this down. Is that okay? No. No? Right. So, take it, take it, take it. Don't okay. show it to oh. me. Oh. <laughs> say stop. Okay, I need you to stop it between okay. say okay. here okay. and here. Alright, we'll try this again. Stop. Alright, put it back. Alright, remember that time? See? Uh, Save the idea. Third chance. Let's just see if I can find your card. If I'm not mistaken, and I hardly ever am. Pretty sure your card's right about. Oh, no. Two's are wild. Yeah. Two's are wild. Here, hold out your hands. Don't hit. Don't hit. It's okay. 
guy. Again, I know it's not that one, I know it's not that one, but if I go like this, I get one card to reverse itself right there inside the center, see? Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> So they, you've seen that bit, right, where you go like this and then make you think it's in his hand, but it's not. You've seen that, and you do this, and that's all. That's, that's a basic manipulation. I'll tell you what, how that works actually is you have two coins. <laughs> okay, no one cared? Okay. So, <laughs> no, that's correct. So the idea is that this coin here stays here, then I go like this, I make one coin go from one hand to the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd think, right? But no. See, I can, I can make another coin appear at my fingertips. So just right here, watch. But not these fingertips. These oh, <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. These are cards. These are cards that have gone through the entire printing process, except for that whole um, printing printing, printing, printing part. Yeah. Printing <laughs> From now on, we are following the card with your name on. So basically, you are trying to find yourself. It's been very similar to after high school when you go backpacking around Europe. <laughs> right, so where is your car currently? There. Absolutely right. All right, all right, all right. That didn't count though. That didn't count. Only when I ring the bell, that's when it counts. Here we go. So there's the car there. Ready? All right, here we go. Ready? Round one. Number one, number two, number three. Where is it? Two. Absolutely right. There you go, Laura. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Very... Go real slow, lad. Where are you now? Okay. Now there is a reason why you lost that time, and I will explain it to you. The reason why you lost is because this is a scam, and I'm cheating. <laughs> you actually picked correctly, but I had already switched the card, so you were following the wrong card. The reason why is I'm a jerk. If I take that card and I place it down there, and I show you that both of these are blank cards, Logic tells you you're actually the car, but it's not. These are both blank. Your card's actually I here. Well, if, the, if you were something marked in the card, then you would be able to see after I switched it where the card was. Does that make sense? All right, so we'll mark these the way they, any gambler would, and I usually use uh, seals because I mean, that's what all the gamblers use to mark cards. It's very <laughs> obvious. It's very subtle. easy. Very subtle. Very yeah. subtle. All right, so take that for me. Thank you. Here's the idea. Laura, that's you, yeah? Okay, yeah. put that there. Now, uh, I can already hear the suspicion out of you. So okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> All right, so the idea, very simple. Your job is to follow the car with the sticker on it, <laughs> not the two blank ones. Here we go. <laughs> Wait, that a lot of you. Yeah, I thought I was gonna help you. <laughs> We will play for my cash. Now I have actual money here. I have actual money here. See there? Oh, nice. no. there you go. Uh, uh, One item from the wallet of your choice if you win. If you lose, you don't have to give me anything. In fact, I'm such a nice guy. If you lose, I will still give you one item from the wallet. But I get to choose. And I should probably let you know about all those uh, <coughs> uh, small municipal fines now. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Number one, number two, number three in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres in Latin. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> number one, number two, number three, your choice. What? This is serious. One. One. This one here? Sure. All right. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn that one over and ask if you would like to change your mind. No. You sure? Yeah. All right. You're staying here? Yeah, I, I try to help. Oh. Try to help. Of course, I never said you could win, though, right? That makes it a scam. I'm cheating. Mean magic. I was quite clear about that. Where did our card go? But I did promise you one what item you from think? the wallet, and I am a man of my word. It's in there. So I thought. No way. <laughs> Shut up. Go look, you even got a little sticker. Come on. <laughs> Make sure it is what I say it is. I say it's a cup. Is it a cup, right? It's a cup. Yeah. Okay, I also hang with me. Where did I put it? Ready? Yeah. Ball goes in the cup. Classic game. Goes all the way back to the Egyptians. Usually played with three, but I went ahead and simplified it down to one cup. The idea is simple. This little ball is going to get snuck into my pocket. That's the game. So I'm going to stand back here a little bit. I'm going to put this over here so you guys on the side there can see. The idea is I'm going to kind of sneak it into my pocket. Now, when I do this, 
This is obviously an open action. Obviously, you see that I just did that. That's the idea. What I also will try to do is I will try to sneak it from the pocket back here underneath the cup. Does that make sense? So it's going to go wherever I decide to go in that first phase every single time. All right? Everybody ready? All right, let's begin. So what we're going to do... Okay? So you didn't realize that was a trick, right? Because I put it there and then it didn't say it. Try again. Okay. Oh, I thought... I, what? Oh, yeah, no, I know. What? No, it's, it's only when I want it to come back. See, because again, if I want it to be here, it'll be here. And when I don't want it to be here, I can then take it here. I can place it on this side. When I do that, go like that. That comes back. goes back underneath the cup. Everybody getting this what? so far? Okay. I'll keep doing it. If a ball, the ball goes here in my pocket. Currently, what? Here, lift it, lift it, lift it. Can I look inside of it? Yeah, I'll duck down. Duck down. <laughs> oh! Did you see it? I did, yeah. Now you're, you're, you're looking too close. You're looking too close. All right, so I'll do this again. Ready? All right, ready? So you don't think I can sneak it underneath there again? I already did. All right, look. Oh, 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 big talk, oh my God. You, see, that, that was tough to sneak down underneath there, wasn't it? Yeah. No magnet that time, was there? No. Yeah, you know what's even harder to do that? Doing it again. Uh, okay. I don't for that applause to dad down. <laughs> Thank you, random people. Thank you. Y'all have a good day here. Rest of your day here in front of Terry Lab. We'll see you around. Woo! Okay. Uh, okay, different show. Obviously, yes. different show. <laughs> I did the ball thing. You did. Was it the same one? Was it the same one? No. Was it the same one that I had no. seen? He did the three card Monty, which the ball thing is kind of like three card Monty, but right, right, right. Uh, but it's more impressive because there's more larger solid objects. You're like, wait, what? Dude, he put right. two lemons in a cup. And it came out. Giant one. one. It came out. There's one cup. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm always impressed with the writing the name on the card trick. Yeah. Some way, somehow, it ends up in different locations, yeah. different pockets. I, I, I thought it was going to wind up in my pocket at one point. Because right. right. that's a thing, I think. It is. Uh, yeah. But that was obviously, with this, you get a different show here because he's able to set up and he's got yeah. a surface he can work with. He's not mobile. He's not working out of a bag. Right. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that, obviously, a lot. That was that was funny. He was good, good, good act. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, a good addition, I think. Again, uh, I see him as a nice replacement for Farley the Fiddler. Right, it's a one-off guy who just stays in front of the amp. Well, the difference between that is that you can you can enjoy Farley acoustically yeah. and passively. Right. You need to invest a little time right. well, for that. Why should like? Far away left, he came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having stock left. And That's true. It's a there. yeah from a plus minus yeah. perspective. Yeah. In terms of scale. I would. I think I. Well, I don't know what I. It's different, and that's that's all that you know. If I could have all of them at once, I would. But you know. Right, right. You kidding me? We don't live in that world. No, I like we don't. the addition. It, fit, it really, really fits to take you back to that frontier land and in front of the bull of the horseshoe. I like it. Yeah, I would like them to make. I don't know. What, I didn't get to go to Ghost Town Alive. I would they like them. Every, they've been. They kept doing it every summer, so you got next year. I still haven't been. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would like to see them give more life out here. Right now, and it's hard to do. But it just brings you back to Legends of Frontierland again, which unfortunately you you know, but you've seen I guess videos hopefully of that a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, because they had stuff out here, out here that you could participate in, right. characters interact with. Uh, you had uh, stations over here. They did they did a thing over here also. You could buy land. That was the thing that you were talking about. We talked about last week the 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 commerce part of it or whatever. Uh, I forget what you, the that term you used. Yeah, the economy of it. Uh, but this is a good start for something like that. Hopefully it is a start. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I, I dare to dream. But uh, I am happy with John the Magician. That was a fun show. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Dueling Pianos. We don't have a timeline on that yet, no, right? No, just said later this fall. Later this yeah. fall. I feel like that could be any time either after October, come October when it's the new fiscal year. Yeah. Or November when the holiday time budget kicks in. Right. right. I, I feel like either start of... October or start of November. Yeah. See likely. Okay. And by the way, if you guys, I just showed highlights. Uh, if you want to see 
the uncut show, both of this and of what we did on the Mark Twain. Go to our acoustic channel, Disneyland Tours. You can see the whole thing there uh, because obviously, I don't think you guys want to watch an hour of magic on YouTube, do you? I mean, some people do, I guess. I don't know. Well, that's where you find it. <laughs> All right, let's get her. Well, surprise, Fresh Bake, we found ourselves over in Fantasyland at the Fantasyland Theater where they do Mickey and the Magical Map. And I want to have a conversation with you and wherever Ron is, he's, oh, he's filming us. Okay, well, I'm going to have a conversation with you uh, about a topic that we were talking about on the live stream mm. last week. One of the things that I missed, one of the best years that Disney ever had since I've been covering it was about five years ago, limited time magic. Do you, do you remember I that? Was, I mean, I probably came with my family at some point that year, but that's not something I have active memories of. Got it, okay. Well, what they did that year was a lot of really special events. Um, you know, the bunny hop on Main Street, right. uh, the Mardi Gras, the guy, the umbrella dancer mm -hmm. in, in New Orleans Square, they had events. And they still do this, you know, in years to follow, events at the old Big Thunder Ranch barbecue yeah. area in the petting zoo. Uh, the Christmas, Easter, and Halloween events that they did back there. Now, we can't do those things anymore, but they were, those were things, those were events that I, I really, are they waving at us? <laughs> they are, okay. <laughs> One of the thoughts that I had, I wanna, there's gotta be some, we don't have the space anymore. Fastland Theater, I feel like it's kind of run its course a little bit. I think you can use a new show. It, well, if, if not a new show, but, Maybe there's a way to repurpose it in something if you're not doing a show. I'm pretty sure the only options that they're actually consider consider are either a new show or demo for a new Atlantic. For a new, you know, Atlantic expansion or a new ride, right? Yeah. What do you think, Ian, of putting something similar to like the Big Thunder Ranch here? I would love to have a quiet, peaceful corner again, but uh, I don't think I think those are deemed not useful. Enough. Do you think so, that there's? Which makes me sad. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there any hope for for stuff like that for Jingle Jamboree, Jingle Jingle Jamboree, or the the Halloween? I forget what they called it, where you could go and meet a villain uh, in those tents. God, you don't know what I'm talking about. You I, mean, really... I know the area by, so like, I, I know what the area was. I... It was so good, right? And they, they, the, the Easter events they had, you could go meet characters. Uh, they did a stage show, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They had a stage and you could do little shows. Uh, I felt like those created a lot of um, energy and a lot of anticipation and people were looking forward to those events. And I feel like that is a thing that is missing from the park today is we don't get any more of that really. Quiet lo-fi stuff doesn't lo-fi doesn't technically draw people. It's great at soaking people up, but yeah. they don't want that. They want things to draw people. Well, you know, okay. So to that, to no, that, no, no, you need things that soak people up, please. To to that end, uh, I think that you do want things that soak people up. You want them to be in a place. No, for a while. You need things that won't necessarily bring new guests to the park, but once people are there, we'll absolutely. Yeah. Because why, while. Because if every new addition draws more people, that's unsustainable from the crowd. Level. Yeah. Uh, you, you, take, you take like a dark ride. Yeah. They can cycle lots and lots of guests through a dark ride, but that experience is a two or three minute experience. It's efficient, it's almost too efficient. Because it's it's putting people right back into the into, into circulation again. Pirates, well, that's, that's a pirate. twenty minute experience. Well, the ride capacity isn't just how quickly you get the people through; it's how many people can hold at any given time. Right. Yes. That exactly. That's why long rides are great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and th that's what I'm saying. To that end, I, I would like to see a, a way for them to get a mass of people in a space for a solid 20, 30, 40 minutes. You know? Yeah. Again, I'm, again, I would love to see more quiet, peaceful, come here, relax, take a little thing in spaces. Yeah. I, I, it's hard for me to see that actually happening. In, in, a, in a, with the current mindset of the parks, actually actively saying this is something that's valuable to us and we want. Yeah. I don't disagree about the value of it. It's, yeah. How likely do, do I see that happening? I do feel like the uh, the Fantasyland stuff that they were talking about has sort of petered out, perhaps, the expansion because of their concerns about Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. I think potentially a lot of things could. That, yeah. That's the only degree to which I care about Star Wars, whether or not people like Star Wars Ryan is how it affects future investment. Right. I really don't, it doesn't really bug me if other people are like, oh, it's not my thing. Right. Cool. I, I care, you know, the extent to which I care how busy it is is how that affects park investment. They, they, they lose their uh, their vigor for some of those projects that some people might be looking forward to. I think more accurately, the, the people who, who decide on the budgets lose their vigor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
okay, well, on that note, or not on that note, I want to go to Toontown, and I want to Roger Rabbit. I want to see what's going on. Speaking of good dark rides. Uh, it's Toontown. Rubber Ducky Screw 947, Rubber Ducky 2, Baseball Lemon. Yeah, we were waiting and there's like bubble right here. I don't know, I feel like that's... Is that up or down? I think that's down. You know, it's diagonal. That's it, it's diagonal for the last time. <laughs> Hold on, we're going, we're, going to, we're going to Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Fast Pass Return is easy, so we're going to standby, which is 30. Is this the standby right here? No, that's Fast Pass Return. Oh, dear. <laughs> Because it says one way, but the arrow goes both directions. Do you get that? Oh, two town. Yeah, they subverted our expectation. Oh, who's this? We're getting a new attraction, right? Actually, right behind the gag factory, right here. I wonder if it's there. If the entrance is going to be where City Hall is. Well, I, well, what I mean to say is that's where they're supposed to be queuing 
where the gag factory is. That's the only thing we're supposed to be losing in Toontown yeah. is the gag well, I mean, factory. Technically, they, they haven't announced anything going away. <laughs> no, they haven't. That's true. So. I'm just going on what's uh, the speculation, yeah. I guess. There won't be further rumor. Uh, good news for Toontown fans, obviously, uh, that this means there's no chance, right? No chance. There's no way that they put that right in and not upgrade Toontown, right? Uh, well, no, no at least a paint job. But then your thing is, from that concept art, like it didn't look like it's gonna work aesthetically different than the existing Toontown. I think there's no chance. It looks chance. aesthetically the same. So I think a fresh paint job. I don't know how much else they would they're actually gonna do that. Because that that the art of that facade and queue had the same sort of you know stylization yeah. as this. Well, no, I'm not asking them for them. I'm not talking about. A, I don't want a whole new Toontown. I just give it. Because it, this thing is, it needs TLC, like a yeah, lot of it. Yeah. Uh, now, actually, and I've also heard that demo has begun backstage. Oh, for the former entertainment building? The, yeah, right behind us, behind the, uh, there's uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the big warehouse buildings have been, demo is underway, so it's right. begun. I can't. There's, yeah, there's nowhere where we can shoot that. Nowhere, like, uh, maybe from the bridge on the five, where, on the harbor. Or like a hotel on the other side. Yeah, maybe, but that's a hell, dude, it's hard yeah. getting that shot. Uh, I know that uh, Jensen got a couple shots from there, but that's not a thing that you can do every week. No. Uh, that's not, so that's just something we're not going to be able to cover construction-wise. No, you won't be able to see anything, so, well, but that is, that is. doing facade work, we can, we can cover that. Yes, definitely. But, but that'll be it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, that's what, 21? 21. So Marvel next year, Runaway Railway year after that. You feeling good about this ride? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Hope, hope, again, it's not going to be open by the time I go to Florida, but I hope. No, 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 not even. Cast members got to go through the queue, though, I heard. Or the they, they grabbed, like, six cast members and had, and had traffic tour them through the ride of the show building. Yeah. Must be, uh... Road drops or not road drops, flag retreat ceremony time. Is it that? No, this can't be right. No, it's not. Good evening, ladies and it's gentlemen. It's this time. The Disneyland band is proud to invite you to join our march down Main Street, USA, as together we celebrate America. Uh, okay, oh, maybe this? God, are they doing flag retreat already? I can suggest Anyway, that signals the retreat. A fresh bake from the parks today. We're going home, guys. We've had an amazing afternoon here. We covered a lot of ground. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, follow us, guys, or subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Twitter at Fresh Bake Dizzy. That's fresh with no e. And on Instagram at underscore Fresh Bake. Um, Are these folks already camping out for electrical parades? Is this the last weekend? Maybe. There's a lot of people on Main Street oh, right now. People just to be having ice cream outside. No, this is this is definitely for parade. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just because there's nothing else happening. Yeah. And it's five hours from from. I was sitting for two it's hours. It's like eight forty or so when it starts at the other end. Yeah, so, it's so, it's, yeah, so, it's not even yeah. four yet, is it? It's four thirty. So four, about oh my four, god. These people. Are, I, don't, I have who knows lost my day. Waiting. They're waiting at least another it's four It's eight forty. Well, they yeah. must be waiting a while because this is full. Yeah. It's full. I mean, can I do? I made sure to see the parade at least twice while it was back. Yeah, I did the same I've thing. seen it three times. Yeah, I did. I'll say that I waited three hours to see it when I went. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot, but I had the meal. Yeah. I had to set up. All right. Well, as long as you enjoyed yourself, Ron. That's all I, that matters. I spent a lot of money, but I enjoyed yeah. myself. Yeah. Do what do what makes you happy, man. Even if that means sitting on a curb for three hours. And let me tell you something. The Main Street Electrical Parade makes you happy. Yeah. There you go. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. Fresh Baked, we're going home. We'll see you next week. Uh, different kind of show this week because we got Baby Moon this weekend, so Liz and I will be here on Monday and Wednesday. Ian won't be, nor will Ron, for that matter. Well, you'll be here on Saturday. If you guys want to come by and say hi, uh, give Ian a high five. I don't know. Do you, do you give high fives? Like, is that I a thing? I mean, I can. I don't have like a rule against it. <laughs> You're not against it? You're not an anti. I don't have, anti like, I don't have <laughs> a hugger. <hunger. laughs> All right. Uh, well, Fresh Bake, again, thank you for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed the show. We love you very much. Thank you for being part of our community and thank hanging you, out with us. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a flag retreat ceremony that's happening. We're going to go right now, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Fresh Bake.